Right, so I'm going to be talking to you about cholesterol today, which is a very interesting subject because everybody has been told cholesterol is bad for you. And so I have this strange thing that happens is people will say to me, over the years, people have come up to me and said to me, I've got cholesterol. And I'm like, that's really good. Because if you didn't have cholesterol, you'd be dead. And they're like, what? Because we just don't know how our bodies work. And it's really, really sad that we are not taught the things that are important in life. I was saying earlier on, I remember about how oxbow lakes are made, but nobody taught me why we use, why the body needs cholesterol, you know, at school. Yeah. I was learned about sine and cos graphs, but not about my body. Although I did biology, we never really studied the human body as a whole. It just, we took, took a, a bull's heart and we took that apart and we looked at all the ventricles and the left and right ventricles and all these different things. But we never looked at how to keep yourself healthy. And so this is, this is a really important thing, and I, and I hope I make it simpler enough for you. It's a very complex system, and the body's very complex, but at the same time, it's very simple. It's kind of weird, because you can delve down into every single type of cholesterol, and LDL, and HDL, and, you know, and, and, and the super LDL, and, the, it just, and, and you can just get bogged down in the information. So I'm going to cover the basics of it today, which is, what is cholesterol, okay? So it's a fatty substance, and you, another word for fatty substance is lipid. So you hear the word lipid and you think, I don't know what they're talking about. It just means fatty substance. That's all it is. It's a fatty substance, and it's very important for cell membranes. Every single membrane in your body is made from cholesterol. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. I didn't until I studied it. It's, it's found in everybody's blood. We all have it, and it's made by your liver. Your liver makes it, and if it was this bad, why would your liver make it? It's found in your brain and your central nervous system. They actually say something like 20 to 30 percent of the cholesterol made in the body is used by the brain and the central. Well, the brain's part of the central nervous system, and it's used to make what's called the myelin sheath. I, uh, the myelin sheath is the sheath that protects your nerves. Now, let me explain that to you. Okay, this is a great thing here. So, if you take the the cord of this food processor over here. Inside there are metal wires, pieces of steel, and they, electricity passes through there. And our central nervous system sends messages around in a system that's similar to electricity, but it's not, nobody fully understands it. What we do know is that when we sleep, that the, the nerve energy in our body is recharged, and so we have to sleep. But nobody can actually catch it and bottle it, and it's fascinating, actually. So if those nerves... The, 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 nerves, the nerves in our body have this myelin sheath wrapped around it, which is an, a layer of insulation, because it's the same with electricity. If that was, those wires were exposed and they touched each other, the two wires, it would short out and who knows, it could blow up and make a fire and whatever happens. And that's what happens with a condition called multiple sclerosis. Your myelin sheath breaks down, but the funny thing about it, it breaks down and then the body rebuilds it and then somewhere else it breaks down again. So you'll be walking along one day and your leg will just collapse because the nerves in your leg are shorting out, or you'd be carrying something and suddenly your arm goes, and then next week it's the left arm, and so it's different parts. Eventually what happens is the body can't fix this fast enough, and it gets really, really bad and ultimately kills you because the central nervous system is sending all the messages around. That myelin sheath is made out of cholesterol. So we need it. We need it for lots of other things. We need it to make hormones. Every hormone in your body your base ingredient to make estrogen, testosterone, progesterone is cholesterol. That's the ingredient. Nobody knew this. And in fact, you'll see later on, I'll say when your hormonal levels are out of balance very often, you'll see people's blood tests show high cholesterol levels, which is kind of weird. Because why would your cholesterol levels be high, but your, your hormones aren't in balance? Thank you, Marie Claire. All right, so we'll get there and I'll explain that. And it's needed to make vitamin D in the skin. Vitamin D gets, cholesterol gets transported to your skin. You go outside in the sun. You can see I've got a bit of a tan lying in the sun on Saturday, just chilling under the tree. And it converts cholesterol into vitamin D. And when you get enough vitamin D, you will have healthy, strong bones, and your immune system will function properly. And vitamin D is considered almost a hormone. It's like a hormone vitamin. So it's also needed by the endocrine system. So Actually, you can see cholesterol is really, really important. It's very important. We all have it. Every animal that has a liver makes cholesterol. OK? 
Okay, so if we eat any animal that has a liver, like a fish has a liver and a chicken has a liver, they all make cholesterol. Your cholesterol will be high. You'll have high, dangerous, and I say dangerous, and the sad thing is it's your body trying to fix the problem. Because that's what I say, you'll see somebody who's got hormonal imbalances, but then the cholesterol levels are high. But the cholesterol levels will be high when there's no transport to take it to the cells. You need a vehicle to transport cholesterol to the cells where you need it. And if that vehicle is not available, then your body just keeps producing cholesterol and your cholesterol levels go higher and higher and higher. Your blood cholesterol levels go up, but there's nothing to transport the cholesterol out of the bloodstream to the cells where we need it. And that's why very often all these things go wrong. You get high blood pressure, high blood sugar, all kinds of things go wrong with people and then they'll say it's the blood pressure being high that causes the high cholesterol but it doesn't make any sense it's like saying flies cause garbage mm -hmm. cholesterol is high because it's not being transported to where it's needed and we need that vehicle so it's high when we don't have the vehicle to transport it and I'll tell you what that is in a while and it's high when we consume animal products because when you eat animal products you're getting in cholesterol doesn't matter whether it's fish or fish oil, people are like, it's high in eggs. It can be higher in certain eggs, but it's high in virtually it's every single animal product contains cholesterol. And a lot of people take fish oil to lower cholesterol because it contains a derivative called EPA that can help with the transport, but it's kind of inefficient because it's been heated. The problem is when you heat cholesterol, if you're eating animal products, and this is part of the problem, there's cholesterol in it, which your body can't deal with because it's pig cholesterol or cow cholesterol or chicken cholesterol, a little bit occasionally is not going to cause a train smash. But people eating three times a day, which in the society we're in, we were taught that. We were talking about school earlier on and our educational system, we're taught to eat eggs for breakfast or, you know, milk. You've got to have some animal product for breakfast and then you, because the industry wants us to eat animal products at every meal because it suits the, the people that have financial interests. And then for lunch, you've got to at least have some cheese, if not a chicken or a tuna salad or something else. And for supper, you're going to have fish or chicken or meat or whatever. So you're eating it three times a day. But the problem comes in with when we heat that cholesterol, cooked cholesterol. When we cook it in our food, it causes inflammation in our arteries. And that's dangerous. Because when you cause inflammation and it's there day in and day out, you start damaging the arteries, they get little pockets and things, and that's a nice place for the cholesterol that's not being moved out of your, your bloodstream to start building up in the arteries and it clogs up the arteries. So it's not, it's, it's not a surprise. When I look at this, it's not surprising that heart disease is the number one killer in westernized countries. One out of two people will get heart disease of some description. Now, not all of it's directly due to cholesterol levels, but most people, when they have a so-called heart attack, like my brother, Bill, some of you may have met him here before, he had a heart attack when he was 50, running up Table Mountain, super fit, not an ounce of fat. He's always been slim and trim like he is, okay? So he's running up the mountain, had a heart attack at the top of where he was going to, and they had to get the 4 by 4 ambulances and everything else. I'm not surprised. Because when you are doing a lot of exercise, your arteries actually constrict, they become narrower. It's just part of what happens when you exercise. So if you have a little clot in there, and he'd had all the scans and the medicals and everything else, but then they found there was one spot they missed in the artery in the vein here, that there was actually cholesterol deposits there, narrowing of the arteries. So I'm not surprised. As I say, we just, we think, we think, that it's just overweight males that have heart attacks. I've heard of a 22-year-old girl having a heart attack in the shower. Fit, slim, and trim. She dropped dead, sadly. It was a friend of mine's niece. All right, so the signs that there's an issue with cholesterol. So you're going to have blood tests, and it shows your vitamin D levels are low. And then you get given what? A vitamin D supplement. You must take vitamin D. And I'll say to people, but you're... Body makes vitamin D from the sun, and they'll tell me, but I am in the sun, and it's just not helping. But if the cholesterol can't get to the skin where it's needed to make vitamin D, your cholesterol, your cholesterol levels are going to be high. So very often, your cholesterol levels are high and your vitamin D levels are low, because the cholesterol is hanging around in the bloodstream instead of going to the cells where it's needed. Your hormonal levels are low. So you might have problems with reproduction, menstrual problems, fertility, menopause. You can have high blood pressure. 
a high blood sugar, multiple sclerosis, any endocrine disorder. Your endocrine system controls everything that goes on in the body. It's all your glands, your thyroid. So you can have a thyroid problem. You can have a pituitary problem. You could have problems with your digestive tract because you have these parietal cells in your stomach and the whole process of peristalsis moving food through the bowels. That process is controlled by the endocrine system. So like anything can go wrong. Your skin, your hair, your nails, your lungs, your liver, your heart, all of that's controlled by the endocrine system. And the endocrine system needs cholesterol to make all these hormones to make everything work properly. So what we have is we're being told high blood pressure and high blood sugar diabetes causes cholesterol problems. And the result of that is heart disease. So it's kind of a weird thing. But what you're needing is you need to get the cholesterol here so that this whole system can work, this endocrine system can work properly. And it can be anything, as I say, from fertility issues to heavy menstrual bleeding. It can be a whole lot of things. And then, of course, multiple sclerosis and any other neural or cognitive things like Alzheimer's disease, senile dementia, any cognitive decline or nerve damage in the body. You'll read about people having a nerve problem where they're ending up in a wheelchair, they were a rugby player or a boxer, and yes, there's some damage to the brain. But when you look at their lifestyle and diet, I'm not surprised because they don't have, and they're not putting the, the one thing we need to transport the cholesterol to the brain where we need it. And if you don't get cholesterol in the brain, you can't, you can't repair cell membranes. You can't even make a new cell membrane. So there's damage, and that's why for years we were told, once there's damage to the brain, there's nothing you can do about it. Now they're finding that you can, and people are, their brains are regenerating, and why are some and why aren't others? Because if you provide the nutrients, they can regenerate. So they won't regenerate if you can't get all the nutrients, including things like cholesterol. The brain doesn't just need cholesterol, but this is a really, really important thing because it's just this total disconnect. And it comes because we're treating your symptoms. We're not looking at you as a whole person with a body system. So your cholesterol's high, we're gonna give you a drug, a statin drug, and what is a statin drug? My, my brother was on statin drugs when he had his heart attack, and he had a heart attack. And in our family, we have this high familial cholesterol levels. His was way over nine, which is where mine used to be. I changed my diet, he took medicine. He lost his memory, suffered from some cognitive decline, and got terrible cramps in his muscles. And those are side effects of taking cholesterol-lowering drugs. We're treating the symptom instead of saying, well, something's wrong with the way you're eating. So in fact, we should be taught the other way around at school. What we taught is, you're sick, because we taught this. I taught this to my children. I'm taking you to the doctor, and the doctor's make, going to make you better. Because they get, no, he's going to give me ejection. And I'd say, no, 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 he's going to make you better. But in fact, we should be teaching them is, let's look at what you're eating and how we're living, and let's try and fix and make an environment in which our body can fix itself. And then, if we're in a car accident to be bleeding to death, we'll call the doctor. Or if we've tried everything else, we're eating properly, we're exercising, we're getting the sunlight, the cholesterol's definitely getting our blood, our blood um, tests are all looking perfect and something weird happens, well then you can go and investigate it. But then you've tried everything else. What people normally do is take the medication, then they have the surgery, and then sometimes, not always, sometimes then they start investigating their diet and changing the way they eat, which is sad. We should have it the other way around, okay? So these are typical symptoms that your cholesterol is not getting to the cells. And usually when you've got these things, you'll go and have a blood test and it'll show you've got high cholesterol levels. Okay, so this is what happens. I, I call this a feedback loop and it's just my own name and it's very simplified. Please don't go and get the physiology textbook and say, oh, but what about this and what? It's a very simplified version. I've totally simplified it because it, everybody needs to understand this. Your liver actually makes cholesterol and then it dumps it in the bloodstream. And the blood, the cholesterol sitting on the bench there. It's sitting on the bench. I can't draw. And it's waiting at the bus stop for something to come and pick it up. Okay, so it's sitting actually in the arteries, waiting. There's the cholesterol waiting. It's waiting for a vehicle to come and pick it up. And I love to illustrate it as a bus because the thing that picks it up the most efficiently is what we call, call a poly or super polyunsaturated or super unsaturated fat. So what that means is, so let's draw the bus. It's a double-decker bus. It's got lots of seats. 
and maybe it's got a little carbon molecule on one. And these are poly unsaturated. In fact, you can call them any, any saturated, unsaturated. So it can be even mono unsaturated. Mono just means there's only one seat open. So they're all full and only one seat's available. So you're not going to pick up a lot of cholesterol with a mono unsaturated fat. You're going to pick it up with a, a poly, lots of seats. Two or more seats are available. So the more polyunsaturated fat, the problem is we have people making things like margarine saying high in polyunsaturated fats, but it's gone through a process where they've actually taken these polyunsaturated fats, passed them through a nickel catalyst, heated it to high temperatures, and attached a carbon molecule to it so that it can be spreadable at room temperature. Unsaturated fats are always liquid, liquid at room temperature. And margarine, we know, is solid. Even though it's spreadable, it's solid. It's just there's more saturated fats in the one that's a solid block, but the spreadable one still contains, a lot of these seats are taken up, okay? And now it's heated. When we heat any fats, it can cause problems in the arteries, an inflammatory response. So polyunsaturated fats, we need the bus to come along. And where we find them is you only find them in plants. You do not find polyunsaturated fats in an animal source. They are saturated. And if you take fat from a pig or a cow or a sheep, if you ever made uh, oh, anything, lard. As a kid, we used to, our grandmother used to have lard, which was pure animal fat, and it was used to spread as a butter. It was solid at room temperature, okay? So we're going to find our polyunsaturated fats, and the best source is flax or hemp. Flax contains the highest levels of unsaturated fats, and that's why a lot of the tests and studies have been done using flax oil. So you take pure, pure flax oil like this, pure flaxseed oil, you can add a little bit to a smoothie, you can add a little bit onto, you never cook with this, you never heat this. Because the minute you've got a lot of open links, open seats in a fat and you heat it, it changes shape very quickly and then your body can't use it. So you never ever should heat a polyunsaturated, that's why margarine is not going to lower your cholesterol levels, it can't. It's heated, it's changed its shape. Okay, so we need to have polyunsaturated fats. The bus comes along, picks up the cholesterol, takes it to the cells, makes cell cell membranes, helps with brain function, makes hormones, makes vitamin D in the skin. It starts to do all of the stuff. And then it sends a message to the brain saying, we've got everything we need, we've made everything we need, and we're really, really happy. And your brain sends a message to the liver and says, reduce the amount of cholesterol that you have that you're making. Can't reduce the output, because we've got enough. So, so initially what very often is one of the questions I've got at the end, a lot of people have, they change their diet to a lot more plant food. Two things happen, I've seen this happen. Or the other people go on high protein, high fat diets. Okay, so you go on a high protein, high fat diet, initially your cholesterol levels may go down. Because you're just putting in so much animal cholesterol into your body, your liver saying, it's getting this feedback like there's lots of cholesterol in the system. The fact that you can't use it properly at the cellular level, partially use it, only starts, that's why usually within 18 months things start to go wrong when people are on a high protein, high fat diet. Because you're not getting in your essential, or your polyunsaturated fats from plants, so you're unable to transport it to where it needs. So there's lots of cholesterol in the bloodstream coming in from animals. And that's one of the things that HDL does. It picks it up and takes it to the liver, but the liver can't use it. The liver can't use the stuff and spews it out. Sometimes the liver starts, we start to have liver problems because it's struggling to use and recycle because the liver recycles cholesterol as well. So sometimes what happens is when people go on a plant-based diet, the cholesterol levels go up because suddenly you've got a vehicle available to transport to all the cells where you need it. You've got, you're taking in, this is a healthy plant-based diet. We're not talking about a junk plant-based diet. You can, have, you can have a heart attack eating really badly on a plant-based diet because you're just you know, living on Oreos and Coca-Cola and uh, coffee and tea and you know, just your diet's shocking. You never go outside and you're just sitting in front of your computer all day. That is not a healthy diet. Just being plant-based doesn't necessarily give you health, okay? It's lots of plant food in the diet. And I'm not saying you have to go like vegan and strict vegetarian. You do need to reduce your animal protein down to not more than between one to three times a week, not bigger than the palm of your hand because that, that'll take you over. If you go higher than that, you go over 600 
grams of animal protein a week, which the studies show if you go over that, you're standing in line to get cancer. And that's another different subject altogether. We also know from the China study that if you go over 5% of your calorie value, which is not easy for most people to work out on a daily basis, chances are you're going to get heart disease, cancer, diabetes. So you just keep it to, you know, every second day, maximum you have one meal with animal products in it and you try and aim for once, and then make sure that it's organic so you're not getting all these other hormones as well. But when you give your body cholesterol that it's not made, the liver kind of gets this message like stop making any. So it just reduces it. So initially your blood cholesterol levels go down, but as I say, usually within 18 months it'll start going up again. Because what will happen is the cells are now struggling, they're not getting enough cholesterol because you're not giving them the vehicle and start sending a message to the liver saying make more, make more. The body is totally confused at that point because there's a lot floating around in the bloodstream, but it's not getting to the cells. It's a bit like all these cars are around the mall over here, okay? Lots and lots of cars, but everybody in there is complaining that there's no business. So what are they doing? They're just parking there and sitting in their cars. They're not getting out of their cars. It would be the same kind of thing. It's, there's lots of cars, but they're not actually getting into the system at all. So your heated animal cholesterol can cause inflammation in blood, I've mentioned this, and can damage uh, the, cell, the, the blood vessels, and then there's easy places for cholesterol to just be deposited. Inflammation causes long-term damage. So nothing happens if it's an inflammation every now and again. But if it's chronic inflammation day in and day out in the arteries, then you're going to damage your arteries in the long term, and then there's nice little nooks and crannies for cholesterol to hold onto things. Can, it can find a space to start building up there, okay? So I've made a pecanut pie, and, and you don't have to be eating pecanuts all day, but as I say, it's nice to know that the fats in there are actually good for you. Pecanuts are, as I say, high in fat. We make um, uh, a bar here, and I'll give you some to taste. This is pecanuts, and it's in carob, and carob contains no animal fats. It doesn't have any cow's milk in it. It's only got, it's got no milk at all. The question, in case no, somebody didn't hear that, is do you need to soak your nuts and seeds? When you soak nuts before you blend them, like especially cashew nuts, really benefit from being soaked. They become much frothier. It's frothier and light and fluffy. But honestly, I've been eating unsoaked nuts my entire last 35 years of my life, and I, it's done nothing bad to me, so I don't know. But uh, there are a lot of people tell you you've got to soak them, and you can be obsessive about your diet. The thing is to not be obsessive. It's to be relaxed and enjoy your life. And if you want to go out and you eat something in a restaurant, it's not every day that you're doing that. You're going to go to a wedding and eat things that are not necessarily good and drink too much champagne. But you'll know that your body can recover because 99% of the time you're living a healthy lifestyle and it can recover. So the body can repair itself when you create the right environment. All right, so we need fatty acids, okay? Then we need exercise. We know that exercise, especially if you do it outdoors, you're going to get sun on your arms and your legs. That's going to convert cholesterol into uh, vitamin D, and you're going to be healthy. But we also know that exercise naturally helps to regulate cholesterol because it regulates the endocrine system. And the endocrine system the system that controls liver function. So it's all, you know, when we go back to this diagram over here, the endocrine system is what controls the liver function anyway, but cholesterol is needed for the endocrine system to work properly. So it's all like the endocrine system's helping that to work properly, getting the cholesterol to the cells, which is helping the endocrine system to work properly. So it's all pretty, it's like a big closed loop. It's actually quite amazing. All right, so the help we need is exercise, very essential, natural light, high raw plant days, right? And one of the reasons for that is it's got a lot of water-soluble fiber. And raisins and bananas, they've both got a lot of water-soluble fiber, especially bananas. And you let, put it into a dish and let it set for about two hours. You turn it out, it's like jelly. You've broken up all that water-soluble fiber and it forms this gel. Well, that's what herbal fiber, when I mean, you mix it and it forms this gel, it actually looks, it's a horrible color. It looks like a bowel movement, the color. But it's, it's like this jelly. No, you, you just take the herbal fiber blend on its own, you drink it. Then it forms a gel. That's what water-soluble fiber does. It's in all our fruit and vegetables. But initially, if you want to really help your digestive tract and you want to get rid of any cholesterol, say, for example, you've eaten food containing cholesterol, and you think, don't, not to get obsessive, I just want to help my body get rid of this cholesterol. I've gone and had some fish. 
So a couple of hours afterwards, I would eat herbal fiber blend, and then it helps to remove all the cholesterol that's lying around in your gut. You don't want the animal cholesterol to get into your bloodstream. It's not helping you at all. It's really just hindering you, okay? So, right, you need a high raw diet, and that'll give you a lot of water-soluble fiber. Water-soluble fiber helps to move uh, cholesterol out of the digestive tract. It's one of the reasons I also tell people to always start your... Um, any cooked meal with some raw fruit or vegetables. Because your vegetables, particularly your fruit, but vegetables as well, also contain some water-soluble fiber. So if you have a nice salad before you eat a, your chicken or your fish, you're going to get that nice fiber. It's going to move. There's no fiber in animal products whatsoever. So it can cause terrible constipation. That's why you need to eat raw fruit or vegetables with your animal products if you're going to eat it. <clears throat> you can have some cooked butternut and stuff with it as well, but the, the raw fruit and vegetables is what's going to actually help to move. Cooking breaks fiber down quite a bit. It helps to move the animal products out so the cholesterol is not sitting there waiting for all of the stuff to get absorbed into your bloodstream. So we do know that studies show the more natural water-soluble fiber, the more plant food in your diet, the lower your cholesterol levels the bad cholesterol. Now people often say to me, what's the bad cholesterol? You get LDL cholesterol and you get HDL cholesterol. Have I got it in here? LDL cholesterol and HDL cholesterol. People will tell you, oh, your HDL's got to be high and your LDL's got to be low and it's, it's really important because our HDL's the good and LDL's the bad. Let's go back to my drawing. LDL actually takes cholesterol to the cells. So it's actually good cholesterol. But it's not going to work efficiently if it's not getting, it's not going to get, it doesn't have essential fatty acids to transport it properly. It's not, it's not, the transport system's not right. It's like you've got the bus driver, which is the LDL, but you don't have the bus. That's basically what you've got. So now the bus driver sitting in the bloodstream with the cholesterol, and now they say LDL's bad because it takes cholesterol to the art. It's trying to take it to the cells, but it can't get into the cells. And so it just hangs around in the arteries. Now LDLs become the baddie. The bad cholesterol is from animal products, the good and heated fats, and the good cholesterol is from plant. It's, it's your liver um, being transported. So your L HDL picks up cholesterol from the bloodstream that's excess and takes it back to the liver. So that's why they say L HDL is good because it looks like it lowers cholesterol by taking it back. But if it's heated in animal fat, it's going to cause problems with the liver in the long term. It's not a cholesterol you can recycle. The liver can recycle cholesterol, but it, and when, the, when that system's really healthy, like my cholesterol is down to like 4.2, 4.8 at a push, which is really good for my family. We have familial high cholesterol levels. So then it's there, that feedback is working, and the cholesterol, there's enough, there's enough uh, in the cells, and there isn't a whole lot needed to, for recycling. But if there was too much, it would be my own cholesterol made by the body, and it will take it back. But it's only needed when these two, it's produced too much, and there's some leftovers, and it mops it up and takes it back. So there's no such thing as LDL being bad for you. It's just got a bad name because we didn't bother teaching anybody how to eat. All right, so, and in closing, just to recap, cholesterol is essential to life. LDL and HDL are both needed. The one's not worse than the other. It's just if we give the body the tools it needs, it sorts this all out. We run around with our blood tests saying, my LDL is too high, my HDL is too low, I've got to do lots of exercise, I'm going to exercise like mad, and then the LDL won't come down. And You just take some flax oil. This is what I take. Every day I take these flax oil tablets. This is what I take. It's got flax in it, it's got some sesame, olive, and sunflower seed oil because it stabilizes it so it doesn't go rancid. And then nitrogen flush it, because in a bottle like this, I mean, I've got this flax oil here. You can see it's in a bottle. And I hate the texture of oil in my mouth, but I'll tell you, I'll show you. Just, it's the texture I don't like. Not even the taste, it's got a nutty taste to it. But like that, you can take it for six months, pure flax oil, but after about six months, you can take too much because you don't know, unless you've got a really good method of, a really, you really listen to your body. Your body will tell you no more and you just don't feel like any more. You take the, and the thing is, once I've opened it like that, oxygen goes in there and starts to oxidize the oil because it's a very unstable oil. Whereas in here, they've taken these capsules and they flush them with nitrogen and pumped all the oxygen out. So it's not, it can't oxidize, oxidize in here at all. 
So when you take it like this, it's, it's got a two-year life. When you open this bottle, it's probably got six weeks before it's got to be used. So it's just a, it makes it convenient for you like this. Some people don't want to take it because it's gelatine. Gelatine from water buffalo. My husband chews it and spits it out. I don't like the oil in my mouth. Just the texture of oil in my mouth is just bleh. Don't like it. It's like bananas. I'm not very fond of bananas because of the texture. But I'll eat the dried ones. Okay. So, LDL and both need it. Plant fats move cholesterol out of the blood to the cells. Animal fats cause inflammation in the blood vessels. Sunlight lowers cholesterol. Fish oil contains cholesterol. Cholesterol is essential for the endocrine system. And the endocrine system is essential for the liver to function properly. So it's very important. And the question always is, I mentioned that earlier on, when people go on a high plant diet, their cholesterol levels can go up because the body gets a message is we've got a bus to transport the cholesterol. Let's make lots of cholesterol and transport it to the cells where it's needed. And then all these hormonal problems and the blood pressure and they all start to regulate. Putting people onto flax oil and barley life. I had one guy who was a food critic. He didn't even change his diet. I just said, take barley life and the Amiga. Just do that and let's see what happens. In six weeks, his blood cholesterol and his blood cholesterol came down, his blood pressure came down, his blood sugar came down. Because if cholesterol's Getting to the endocrine system, your endocrine system controls blood pressure and blood sugar. So it's a quick thing to do. I just told him at least when you're out eating in a restaurant, please eat some raw food before the cooked food, which he did. And he said he could do that. As a food critic, you can't be too fussy sometimes. If you've got any questions you'd like to ask before I quickly make you a pecan nut pie. How many of the amigas a day should one Maintenance is six, six capsules a day. That's what we take every day. There's some days I look at it and think, I don't feel like it today might be one day a week, like on a Sunday. I just don't feel like it. I don't take it. But I found six is maintenance, especially if you've gone through menopause. Then you need a bit extra to make extra hormones. Your adrenal glands make all the hormones the ovaries used to make. So you need cholesterol getting to the adrenal glands. And I need more amigas for that. Also found my husband as well. Once he sort of passed 40, 50, he needed more. Before that, we were probably taking about three or four a day. And then once we went through midlife we felt we needed more but you've got to listen to your body if your eyes are dry if your skin is dry any other body parts in women are dry i'm not going into details this is on camera that is an indication there's not enough essential fatty acids if there's inflammation in your body indication not enough essential fatty acids if there's if your cholesterol levels are high not enough essential fatty acids if your vitamin d levels are low uh, blood pressure and blood sugar, any health issue very often that you pick up in a blood test or with symptoms, once you increase your essential fatty acids and you get this loop going and the cholesterol getting to where it's needed, your body just responds beautifully. So my husband has a high PSA count along with yes. the bad LDL, like a high LDL. Is it obviously all linked? It, it's, ultimately, it's ultimately all little. PSA levels, if they're high, indicates it will cause prostate problems. And that is an indication that you might get prostate cancer. And so they'll get you onto a whole lot of medication and a whole protocol instead of looking at it and saying, let's just get your diet right. Incidentally, it's very easy to sort out high PSA levels. Mm -hmm. You can do the 30-day detox, which is a total plant-based. He's done it with me three times last year, but then he just goes back to his... And his PSA levels go down. It does. It does yeah. go down. So he knows. Yeah. He, you don't want him to get a big fright. So what you maybe need to say to him is like, can you just eat it between one and three times a week max? Not bigger than the size of the palm of your hand. Because you can't say, no meat ever again. He's a guy. He's a South African guy. Even worse. He loves brying. So you can say, okay, once a week we can bry. And once a week you can somehow have a piece of fish. And once a week you can have an egg. That's it. And then always raw before cooked. Raw before he eats animal protein. At least he's not going to feel completely deprived because he knows it works for him. And then if the PSA levels start to creep up again and he's doing that, he's going to know he's going to cut back, maybe only twice a week, maybe only once a week. And then if it's still, usually once a week, he should be okay. It's, if he gets to prostate cancer, then it's totally plant-based. You don't have any choice. So right now he needs to be low animal protein, not more than one to three times a week, but not bigger than the palm of your hand. So that would be a piece of meat. So if he's at the braai, eating vos and a chop and a piece of steak is all too much. So what helps is eating that raw food before the cooked nice big salad with avocado in it. The avocado satisfies your need for essential fatty acids. And when you're getting their fatty acids, if you give him six omegas a day, is he having that? Yeah. 
that helps to stop the craving for, a, for, for animal products. If you're still craving it, I'd increase the amount of omega, omega capsules, give them more flax oil. You can go up to 18 capsules a day, six, three times a day. We've seen with bad inflammation and, and problems like that. He may have to clear out a lot of cholesterol in his body and a lot of all kinds of things. So he, initially he may need six capsules three times a day with his barley life. And then when it stabilizes, you go down to six and two. You don't need those high levels forever. It's just to fix the body. It needs, initially needs extra fats to get rid of all the cholesterol, which if you go to a totally plant-based diet, they clear your, your arteries clear up within two years. But if you put high um, omega-3s into the diet, like taking 18 a day, for example, if you were to do that for six to eight to 12 months, you may clear the arteries quicker because you need to pick that all up and take it away. And the body can do that with your essential fatty acids. Any other questions you want to ask? With the extracted oils, is it not better than to rather just have avo because the fiber has not been removed, flaxseed? You're getting mainly omega-6s when you have avocados, nuts, seeds, and olives, and very little omega-3s. So the omega-6s will help to move cholesterol out of the bloodstream, but the omega-6s, the omega-3s do it very quickly. So that's why I initially go high with the flax oil and then we go down back low to it. But omega-3s, we need it for our adrenal glands to function properly. And if we all lived on the farm and there was fresh air and no pollution, we'd probably be refined with no flax oil. Maybe we could make a flax cereal and eat it like that and get a little bit of oil like that. But we live with a lot of stress. Just driving your car. Somebody's driving like an idiot. Oh, somebody's driving and you're shouting at them. You're getting tense in the traffic. All of that requires your adrenal glands to react to it. And you're, we're living in an age where we live on our adrenal glands. It's distress. You know, you switch on the radio, it's another war and another strike and another thing, and you eventually get to the point, I'm just going to put my head in the ground. But then your kids start to do things that stress you out. You know I mean? Just, it's there. And stress requires a lot more omega-3s to get the adrenal glands working as well as they should. So those are the good fats, avocados and nuts and seeds. But if you find that your cholesterol levels aren't coming down and your hormonal problems aren't getting sorted out, like your eczema is not going and your inflammation and your knee problems and your cognitive decline, if that, then you're going to just need to increase the omega-3s. And the way to do that is flax oil, omega capsules. That's one of the ways to do it. Okay. I'm just going to give you a little bit, like a teaspoon, because a lot of people take the barley and they just put loads of it in. And then it's this green sludge. And then you're like, ugh, this stuff's disgusting. So I'm going to put this as dried beets. You can make your own fresh. I just, the juice extractor just gets so clogged with, and messy. It's the messiest juice to make is beet juice. And it's really good. Beet contains something called nitrates in very high quantities. And the nitri nitrates convert to nitric oxide. And that opens your arteries. And so if your blood pressure is too high, it'll actually drop your blood pressure within 20 minutes. My blood pressure has always been pretty sort of low, somewhere between 90 over 60, 100 over 70. That's where it is. Taking beets doesn't drop my blood pressure at all because I don't need it to drop. So it only does it if you need it to drop. So and I'm just putting a little bit of that. And I'm going to add a little bit of ice. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Sometimes it's more green and other times it's more red. You don't stress about it. But when it's cold, it's nicer. This is an easy, easy peasy, okay? The crust, this is a pecan nut pie. It's a great way to introduce healthier options to your family without them realizing that you're taking away. And it's full of water soluble fiber. It's got pecan nuts in it. It's got cashew nuts in it. And the crust is made of muesli. So the crust we make, it's two or three cups. I'll tell you now. And we're going to blend that at high speed until it's finely chopped. I use our muesli because it's, I know what's in it. It's got, it's got no preservatives in the dried fruit in it. It's got no refined sugar. It's got um, gluten-free oats as well, yeah. So we had four cups, that's four cups of muesli. Depends on the size of your dish as well, you can adjust it. Mm -hmm. 
can see there, in the old days, remember we used to make a pie crust with tennis biscuits or ginger biscuits? It was just a quick way to do it. Who wants to make pastry? You know what I mean? Let's take the shortcuts. So you can actually use this combination of muesli and bananas and just make little cookies. But it makes a lovely crust. So I'm putting a banana. Oh, this is a frozen banana. It looks disgusting. But I don't have fresh. And when bananas are very ripe, you just take the skins off and freeze them. I'm going to blend that. like a dough and then I've got a tin over here cake tin up there I've used a pie dish and I'm going to pop this in here you can butter it with a little bit of butter I'm using our vegan butter um, it just sticks way less than adding olive oil if you put olive oil in it it's been a saturated fats don't change much in their shape they're not very useful for transporting things like cholesterol but you can see that's nice and it's like a dough and you're just going to press that in there oh and i oh i was meant to put the cinnamon in as well and i forgot <laughs> i'll just put it in there you can't really flop this. I mean, if you put it in and it's... In fact, you can put it in the filling if you want to. It's a problem with talking and cooking. I don't know about you. Have you ever stood in the kitchen talking to your friend and then you leave an ingredient out? It's like the worst thing. Chatting away and the next thing you've left off like a really important ingredient. So once you've spread this all around and pushed it out, and then the filling's pretty easy. It's uh, 100 grams of our butter. I'm going to add a half a cup of fructose and a half a cup of honey. Fructose doesn't upset your blood sugar, so it's not going to cause any problems. I like to blend this up until it's kind of fine, almost like caster sugar. All right, I'm going to add to that. One cup of cashews, vanilla essence, there's some water, let's get it all on here. Honey. So I'm going to add the cashews in there, chop them all up together. Cashews naturally thicken when you cook them, so it's actually really handy to, to use them. So that's the fructose and the cashew nuts. So it's all blended and fine and everything else. And to that I'm going to add the vanilla, about a teaspoon, it's a little bit more. This is pure vanilla that we've got here. This is half a cup of honey, Sean. Yes, half a cup of honey. Thank you. It's very, that's why I don't like to sweeten the crust, because this is sweet. And the butter. So 100 grams or half a cup, half a cup of water. pecan pieces down there and the pecan holes you kind of mix them together you can make a pattern on the top and turn them all face up you know so that they're all looking very pretty <coughs> and then you bake it you bake it you can pre-bake the crust if you want to but it's actually been baked already so this is the mixture that goes on top <laughs> 